What are you trying to say, Craig? If these are the kind of questions I'm getting, I'm, I'm out of here. Kill that. Cut the camera. I'm done. Low Rider ST. Man, this feels so much more better already. <laughs> We're back in beautiful sunny Santa Barbara and today we got to ride the all new Harley Davidson 2022 Lowrider ST and I have to say I absolutely love this bike and uh, I'm not just saying that because Harley flew me all the way out to California and gave me a bunch of food and let me ride bikes for a week I'm saying it because I genuinely really enjoyed riding this bike today it was a lot of fun we were going up and down the coast we uh, were on some turns we were on the 101 we were in some canyons and everywhere we went this bike was flawless and it, it was fun from beginning to end i loved every bit of riding it one of the really cool things about this new 2022 the st it does come with the 117 engine that's a step up from the 114 that was in the previous lowrider s model this is going to give you 104 horsepower and 120 five feet of torque at about 3500 rpms and and that's right where this bike wants to be it was fun all through the gears speaking of gears i did think there was a little gap between second and third sometimes i wanted a second and a half but other than that uh on and, and honestly overdrive we were on the 101 rolling at 65 miles an hour i think i was in fifth the whole time overdrive sixth gear was just a little high and it brought the rpms down in a little bit so i kept them i kept it down the gear and the rpms up just to get some more of that sound and some more of the feel of the bike was we were rolling down the highway and uh it worked it put a smile on my face the whole time okay so it doesn't like second we'll keep her in third maybe we'll go down to second here interesting so i mean i'm I don't know if they changed any sort of gearing in this transmission, uh, but there is quite a step between second and third. Now Harley stuck with the traditional 19 inch front wheel with the 16 inch back wheel. And on the ST, they put the Michelin Scorcher 31s on, which is one of my favorite tires. Um, uh, you guys watch the channel, you know we're Michelin guys. We really love those tires. And those tires held no matter where we were on the road. Uh, we even came around a, a blind right hand corner and a guy was blowing leaves all over the road. And this thing just stuck right to the pavement, had all the confidence in the world. Two of the things that I really liked about this bike, and I know it sounds completely ridiculous and super silly, but I really like the foot pegs. I'm a bigger guy, I got big canoe shoes, and when I was riding, I could move all around the foot pegs. I wasn't cramped at all. I, it's hard to sit still, so I'm kind of always moving and back and forth, and uh, it was really roomy. There was no vibrations through the pegs. A little bit up at the bars, but it's supposed to be there. It's a Harley, and that's what they do. Feeling that suspension travel. Look at that, llamas. Llamas, llamas. Wow, what a beautiful road wow this is absolutely incredible we're not in the heart of california wine country but we are in a suburb of california wine country and it's it's beautiful out here the ocean is literally a mile uh over that hill the other thing I really liked are is the gauges. They call this the tech riser. So the gauges are actually built right into the riser for the bars. Now the ST does run a higher bend bar and a four inch riser. And that brings the bars up and back. This bike is beautiful from front to back. It has that West Coast style with the, with the fairing and the high saddle bags up above the pipes. It just, it, it has the look and it's it's absolutely incredible. You know, one of the really smart things I think Harley did was running the, the bags off the, the Spork Glide. A, I think it keeps part numbers off their books. And B, it's, it's a sweet look. I mean, how can you argue with this? These are one-handed operation. Flip the switch and they open up. There's a uh, dampening in here so that they're not flipping and flopping all over the place. And they are quick detached with one simple uh, knob here in the center versus if you guys remember the old two uh, Zeus buttons here. The Lowrider ST comes in two different colors. Black, because it's a Harley and they all have to come in black. And the new Gunship Gray. Is that right? Gunship Gray? Yeah. yeah. Gunship Gray, which is 
my personal favorite. If you watch the Nightster videos, they also have the Nightster in that gunship gray, and it's a phenomenal color. Another one of the styling cues Harley did was they really took a lot of the chrome off the bike, replaced it with the black wrinkle finish, uh, flat black accents and things like that, which in my opinion is, is perfect. Uh, I'm kind of glad that chrome trend is past us now. One of the really cool things about this bike is this little part right here. Now this is the push rod tube and this is the push rod tube. I'm going to call it push rod tube coupler. I don't know what the fancy term is for it. So that's a Dash 36 part number. And what that means is that has been in Harley's parts catalog since 1936. So if you have an old knucklehead at home, there's a chance that part would fit your knucklehead. How cool is that? I got a big surprise for you guys. I'm going to be joined by Paul Weiss. Mr. Weiss, How you doing? thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Paul is the head engineer for this project. This was kind of his baby. He brought it to market and Paul crushed it. Right on. Absolutely crushed it. I didn't find a single flaw in this bike all day. It was, it performed amazingly. Everywhere we went, it was great. What are the couple key features on the new ST versus the previous S model that would stand out? Um, so, you know, one of the most significant upgrades was the powertrain that you already hit on, the 117. Uh, that's new for Mallier 22. First okay. time ever offered on a soft tail. The 117 is shared between the Lowrider S and the ST. So okay. think of them as uh, fraternal twins, maybe. Up until then, the 117 was only offered in CVO, CVO. Yeah, CVO right. packages. Yeah. So this has a CVO cam. So now this is going to have about a 5% power increase over the 114. And that is definitely noticeable when you're out on the road. And uh, again, with those torque numbers, Pulling out of corners is just, it's amazing. Merging onto the freeway was probably the funnest thing I did all day. Like we just, <laughs> you just let the thing eat and it was, it was a blast. So another upgrade from the FXLRS would be the suspension. So in the rear, we went from the 43 millimeter to a 56 millimeter. So get about an extra half inch of shock travel, which translates to a full inch to the rear wheel. And you know, it, it allows you to lay the bike over even further than you would have previously. And the FXLRS, very agile, very competent chassis. Like it gives you confidence. Now this allows you to push a little bit hotter into the uh -huh. corners. Uh-huh, I, I could really notice the difference. Now we also rode the Nightster this week and uh, we were laughing and joking. We're all gonna need new boots when we were done because we, we kept scraping our boots in the turns. Well, I guess I can run out of talent pretty quick, but I didn't come close to scraping anything today. Now with that race suspension, that was some of that styling as well, going for this West Coast muscle bike kind of sport bike feel. Yeah. Um, you can really tell aesthetically, it lifts the back of the bike up and, yep. and gives it a, a meaner stance. For sure, style was driving the, the taller stance, right? Lifting the vehicle up, because you know, that's what we were seeing customers do with their own bikes. Mm -hmm. And you know, adding to the, you know, the additional vehicle height in the rear, the bags were also lifted. so. You see, we lifted the, the Sport Glide bags. This, these are brand new saddlebag tubs. And the reason we went with new tubs is to, to raise the bike, to raise the bags rather up an additional two inches okay. to give it that tall stance that you're, it, that you're okay. noting here. Yep, yep. And it, it, looks, it looks incredible. They really, they really did nail it with the styling of this bike. I guess the, the third answer to your question, what's yeah. different between this and the LRS is obviously the fairing in the bags. This is a lightweight, bagger so you got the the convenience of the the one touch saddlebag storage but then, i really like that that's really nice yeah and then the fairing system obviously giving it at wind protection so mm -hmm. um you're a little bit taller than me i don't know how the wind protection worked for you but i felt like i was in this just perfect silent bubble of air like yeah i for me i was playing around a little bit as we were riding i would duck to the right duck to the left up down and trying to find and yeah there was really zero buffeting uh, my helmet wasn't flopping all over the place. It was nice and quiet. And this is the standard windscreen on this. Now you do offer two other, you offer a taller one and also a shorter one. Yes. And the, the shorter one's actually silk screen to match the, the wheel finish. So it's kind of oh, nice. a trick, yeah. That's another styling uh, feature with this ST is the bronze wheels. Uh, the bronze wheel package is carryover from the LRS model and it pops. It looks really, really good. Uh, I know you guys and your team spend a lot of time working on this fairing. Yeah, we it, it seems like when I'm talking to you, that's, that seems like one of your pride and joys. Absolutely. And, and it all started in a virtual wind tunnel? Yeah, well, you know, early development of the, the fairing um, 
was performed in CFD, so computational fluid dynamics. Okay. And yeah, it's it's more or less a virtual wind tunnel, and it allows you to you know run a stream of free air against the fairing. You've got a mannequin or a Craigakin sitting a, a on a bike, like yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sitting on the bike, and you know you can see the trajectory the of the bike. of the air as it flows through the vents, right? So you've got the vent, center vent above the headlight, the two cheek vents straddling the headlight. You've got these um, wind deflectors on the trailing edge, which are actually really important for the air control. Um, the windshield. Now, are these are these to get the air? away from your your legs the biggest culprit when it comes to head buffeting is the stuff that comes up from behind you see the guys with their big beards uh-huh. going down the highway yeah, and they're kind yeah. of spreading out that when that hits a helmet that's what is causing you to buff it so it's the the updrafts that are coming <clears throat> in front of the tank so <clears throat> excuse me the the wind deflectors are the the main role they serve is to kind of kick that updraft out. out so it's not coming up right that's and then, genius <laughs> you know that's that's uh, that's what you learn when you when you talk to an engineer and you actually listen to what they're saying who would have ever thought that the helmet buffeting that you experience is actually air coming up from underneath it blows my mind if you had to pick one thing about this bike what's your favorite part about riding it wide open throttle launch cutting that rear tire loose <laughs> looking back at the the s on the pavement that's my favorite part you you know that's a great point so this bike comes standard with abs front and rear it does not have traction control that is correct and that is awesome because we don't need our motorcycles telling us when and when we can't do burnouts and that you know that's another one of the favorite aspects of the bike for me personally is that the bike is you're, you're almost assimilated to one when you're on this bike it does exactly what you're thinking you want it to do like it just responds so predictably yeah. and it does what you want when you want it yep and man it lo- allows you to enjoy that ride yeah yeah it, it really was it was a blast and now this bike also is there are no modes there there isn't a rain mode there isn't a road mode sport mode beginner mode unicorn mode it's just a pure motorcycle you have 117 cubic inches of of motor to play with and the bike's not gonna the bike's not gonna hinder you from having fun you don't have to push any buttons or switches to get the extra go juice so you know another cool aspect of the fairing development while we're still talking about the the fairing was that uh, we had a a design engineer from the parts and accessories team on our project team from day one they we were co-developing this inner fairing system that you see so you've got a two panel inner fairing you've got the the large main panel but then there's this dash panel and you know the, the reason that this dash panel exists is to allow customers purchasing the rockford fosgate audio system uh in less than 30 minutes with ease you pop the outer fairing off you remove this dash panel and you drop the new rockford fosgate audio system in you plug it in you don't have to move the tank you don't have to get under the seat it's already been pre-wired it's all pre-wired it's plug and play and harley is totally cool with you as the customer you as the bike owner installing that accessory 125 watts per channel (sighs) that's a lot of watts all of them that's all the watts So yeah, that's that's another you know very very cool aspect. You know, this. we one of the bikes on this test fleet actually had the radio in it. Yep. She was she was pumping out some sick beats. We were cruising up to 101. I could hear her jamming out. So so Paul, one of the things I really liked about this bike was I think I think you referred to this as the tech riser. Yeah. So it's a four inch riser and it has your gauges and all your instrument lights here. If you're not familiar with the last, the previous version, you had the dual gauges here. Kind of had to take your eyes off the road a little bit more if you wanted to see how fast you're going while you pass the cop. This up here, it's just a quick look down with your eyes and and it it's it's really almost like a heads up display it it, it's right there it it doesn't take any attention away from from what you're doing when you're riding the bike some of those subtle nuances that is giving you more confidence when you're riding yeah you know yeah yeah no i i really liked it i uh i thought you guys and and the design team absolutely crushed it with this bike Uh, you guys know i'm not a harley guy I, i love them i appreciate them but if I were in the market for a bike today, I'd be looking for these. I'd definitely be looking for one of these. I believe pretty hard to get right now as a, as a customer. Uh, they're starting to be released more to dealers. Uh, the dealers are going to have to use up some of their special uh, uh, like pre-buys, and they're going to be allowed so many per month. Talking to some dealers that are on this trip with us, they said when this bike was released, their phones have never rang more, and they sold out as fast as they could answer the phone. People are hot on this bike, and 
I can see why after riding it. Okay, so my, you guys know my background is a mechanic background. I'm, I'm the wrench swinger. I'm the 200 pound gorilla on the end of the 10 millimeter wrench. And now I'm talking with an engineer and I have an important question to ask you from all mechanics. Do you engineers ever have to fix anything? Do you think of us when you're engineering stuff and you put that little bolt up where nobody can get it? What are you trying to say, Craig? I, I, I gotta know. The people want to know. Look, do these the, look the like the fingernails of know. a mouse pusher? <sighs> if these are the kind of questions I'm getting, I'm, I'm out of here. Kill you, that. Cut the camera. I'm done. Done? I'm done. Have we, Siri, we, we all wanted to, all right. That was Paul. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Harley, thank you for having us out here. It's been amazing. Um, can't say enough about these bikes. Uh, this one here is a true winner. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time. Wait, you gotta come back on screen. They're gonna, everyone's gonna be so scared. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> We're still yeah. friends. Love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching.